I'm adding this to the end of the video to point out an error and to give some more tips. This is not an installation video. There are lots of those on YouTube. I just wanted to give you a little tour around this unit and discuss some of the details. I have no professional experience whatsoever regarding these installations. This was the first one I did and nothing in this video is to be taken as advice. I'm just showing you the way I did it. Here's a correction to the video. At 6 minutes 44 seconds, I meant to say that these caps went on the end of the copper pipe sticking out of the back of the inside unit. I should not have said on the line set. There is nothing at all in the line set in the non-do-it-yourself models. The inside unit is charged with nitrogen for protection. You can tell if your inside unit has leaked when you take the caps off. Then the lines must be vacuumed out before releasing the R410A in the outside unit. The refrigerant then flows through your vacuumed out evaporator and when you open the valves on the main unit, it goes through the rest of the system. The most common mini-split heat pumps often come in do-it-yourself and non-do-it-yourself models. The non-do-it-yourself models cost about half as much, though they are virtually the same mechanically. But you need some extra tools, a little more care, and a little more thought to install these. Also, your warranty may be invalid if you self-install a non-do-it-yourself model. You are paying a good amount extra for the warranty when you buy the do-it-yourself versions of these models. Usually you can buy another non-do-it-yourself unit for about the cost of that warranty. If something goes wrong, you will have the tools and hopefully the know-how to fix it. I like to learn about new tools and techniques and I love tools, so this is an excuse to get more. For me, the biggest problem with the do-it-yourself models is the 15 feet of line you often see coiled into a loop behind the unit. It's ugly, it looks way too do-it-yourself, they are easily damaged, and the loops will allow refrigerant oil to collect in the bottom. I went with Mr. Cool because it turned out to be the cheapest. Also, Home Depot sells these units, so I figure there must be a lot of them out there, which is always good if you're trying to find out something in particular. But there are dozens of supposed brands of these little heat pumps. However, they're all made by Mydea, a huge HVAC manufacturer. They are then rebranded as Pioneer, Sinville, Mr. Cool, and many more. They differ in the seller support and in some of the documentation. If you look at enough manuals on the internet from different models, you will see the trouble codes, in addition to the looks, are usually identical between brands. That's a pretty good giveaway. You might notice the remotes are a little different. I suspect they all have most of the same functions. Some manuals are more comprehensive than others. That's because each vendor is able to customize their manuals. If you search the web for the installation manuals from the various vendors, you can find out just about everything you need to know, including repair and troubleshooting techniques. One manual or the other might have enough, it, excuse me, might have more information than the manual you have. Here's a tip I didn't manage to put in the video. When you place your outside unit, place it a little toward the front of the pad and a little off to the side. That way, if you screw up the first flare job, you can slide the unit toward the back or left or right to get some breathing room with a line, cut off the bad end, and try it again. However, you should practice enough in advance with the flaring tool so that you know you can do it right. I use the flares that came with the line set as guides, trying to make my flares identical to those. There is also information in the manual exa about exactly how to position the refrigerant line in the flaring tool. I don't work for anyone and I receive no compensation to do this video. Thanks very much.